It's a catastrophic environmental disaster. On April 20, 2010, the Deepwater Horizon oil rig explodes off the coast of Louisiana, killing 11 and injuring 17, leaving the damaged underwater oil well spewing millions of gallons of oil into the Gulf of Mexico. Researchers at the University of South Florida's College of Marine Science immediately spring into action. We started tracking the oil literally on day one. Working with other scientists and government agencies, Dr. Robert Weisberg uses satellite images and a sophisticated arsenal of surface and underwater sampling and tracking devices. We would then forecast where the oil would go over the next three and a half days using forecast winds and, uh, and a, a number of different ocean circulation models. In just a matter of days, the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, or NOAA, is using Weisberg's forecast as part of its official daily briefings. But tracking the oil also means getting out on the water to collect valuable samples. Universities are very nimble in the way they can respond to a crisis. They don't take long to mobilize and get people together, and, and that was something that the College of Marine Science and the state agencies that worked with us were very good at doing. Planning a research cruise usually takes months, but just a few days after the explosion, College of Marine Science research vessels are ready to deploy to the spill. It's when you're there in the middle of the spill and it goes to the horizon uh, and you can, you can smell it and you can see in some cases, animals that aren't doing well at the surface. It has a pretty profound effect. Over the next months, USF College of Marine Science research vessels, carrying faculty, staff, and students, log tens of thousands of hours, day and night, in the Gulf, taking samples and documenting the damage to fragile ecosystems. As more and more oil spills out of the well, USF scientists worry about the long-term impact of the oil, as well as the massive amounts of dispersant used. Spray on. Spray. Traditionally, uh, what we knew about oil spills is they were slicks on the surface, and the use of dispersant had never really been done with the deep oil spills. The well is finally capped on July 15th, after some 200 million gallons flowed into the Gulf. By early August, the surface sheen seemed to disappear. But what actually has happened is that the dispersant has caused the oil to go down in the subsurface where we found it to be abundant and toxic. We went out there as academics with a very singular mission to find out whether or not there was submerged oil. And that discovery makes international headlines. Where is all that oil? This morning, CNN may finally be getting answers and the news is not good. University of South Florida researchers tell us they have discovered the oil on the ocean floor. What they found was subsurface oil, just 40 miles south of Panama City. And not only was the water toxic, but so was the sediment found deep in the ocean floor. When exposed to UV light, the oil in the sediment becomes clearly visible. This is the sediment that we see at 2,300 meters. These discoveries make USF scientists instant academic rock stars. Again, it was this incredible sense of discovery and that, we, that we, we really changed what is recognized about what an oil spill is. And there's not many times that you can change the paradigm of something. We don't know if we're going to be detecting toxicity for another couple months, couple years, or couple decades in response to this uh, oil spill. I think it's important, the top priority is to, is to know what's, how the ecosystem has responded. Reflecting back on all of the oil spill work they've done this year, the USF scientists truly value their ability to speak out and inform the public. But I don't think the people want necessarily candy-coated information. I think they want real information. Having independent scientists without any axe to grind or not beholden to anybody to actually provide um, credible information I think was very important. 
As the oil research continues, it offers a unique opportunity to students at the USF College of Marine Science. Kara Radaba is a PhD student who was on the first Weatherbird cruise to the spill. It's a tragedy, but it's also a big opportunity because the University of South Florida was so close that we could study this very well. Greg Ellis is another PhD student. He works with Dr. David Hollander and was also aboard the Weatherbird when the subsurface oil was found. I think we've proved that we have a valuable role to play, that scientific research is not something that just exists in the ivory tower. It's very important to have them not only in there making the measurements, but in there in the interpretation of the data because their fresh minds are not corrupted by our preconceived notions of the way it should be. I think that's the ultimate type of student-faculty interaction. We have to realize too, this is a teaching experience. I, this is tremendous to, to train graduate students and hopefully they'll learn from this so that uh, we hope nothing like this will ever happen again. Mm -hmm.